So my father came in 19, must have been 60, 60, 1960, 61, and there was a group of men that came from um, Pakistan to Iran and then to England. Actually, Dad went to Bradford first and didn't like it, so he came back to, he came to Bristol with his brothers and settled down. And we arrived in um, November 1962 on a miserable, you know, winter evening and it was horrible and it was a very small house and cold. But we were with Dad and the family was together again, so that's how we arrived in Bristol. We were one of the first families in Totterdown, the first, you know, Asian children, black children in the junior school. I was only 18 months when we moved from Pakistan to Iran and um, Iran I spent, what, five, six years. Um, yeah, I remember the very big house, we had a swimming pool, all the family lived together um, and life was good. My father wanted his children to be brought up in a Christian country and be educated here, so that's what, that's what motivated him and that's why we came to England. Some people thought he was a bit, you know, questioned why he was doing that when we had such a good life in Iran. But he knew what he was doing because a few years later, you know, they had the topple of the Shah of Iran and everything. So he made the right move. But we were very really welcome. You know, Totterdam was always a very working class community. Everybody helped themselves. Um, and we got on famously. We were, you know, made friends very easily and life settled down to this new home. I left school and I went to what was then the Bristol Polytechnic and I did a three years um, HND in fashion and textile, so it was always my thing. Um, then got married, there wasn't many jobs here and I did various things, you know, worked in accounts offices and stuff like that. Um, and then had the children, and then I think the youngest was about three when this job came up for a part-time, six hours a week community worker. So that's how it all started. And then that's it, 25 years next year, I've been in the voluntary community sector. There was lots of Asian women in Totterdown at the time. There's a large community and many young brides had come over and they didn't have much to do there. So. Uh, the Avon County Council then set up um, six hours a week for a community worker to kind of do social, educational, cultural activities for uh, young mums and their children. So we used to meet on a Saturday afternoon in the YMCA and do all sorts of things. We used to have real good fun. Um, from that we, we kind of thought of what women could do um, and we talked to the women and something that they wanted to do was to learn how to make their own clothes because you couldn't go to, you know, the big stores or whatever to, and buy traditional Asian clothes. So that's how it started. And we also knew that some women were working from home and being exploited in, in, in ways of, you know, not having a proper contract and not being paid for the kind of work they did. So we thought, well, if we built their skills, and gave them confidence and we thought they'd be empowered then to kind of ask for the right money and not be kind of bullied into kind of doing things they didn't, really didn't want to or had um, the facility or the means of doing things. So we thought, okay, sewing would be a good thing and that's what we did. Our specialism is providing opportunities for women to learn sewing skills. So we start from very entry, basic skills, uh, general sewing, so women can get to know how to use the machine, how to do very simple seams, how to do buttonholes, or put a button on. And then we we'll go right up to kind of level three, which is A-level standards. Um, so they can do anything from pattern cutting, which is very unique to, you know, in, in Bristol to what we do here. Um, garment construction, Asian garment construction, which is very, again, uh, a specialist that we provide here at Sulai for Skills. Um, it's about making traditional Asian garments, um, using proper patterns, um, and 
Um, it's one of the courses that we're very proud of because we've actually had it accredited through the National Open College Networks Certificate. It's very much part of my heritage. Um, growing up, art was very much um, my thing. I used to love art and doing, and it was more textiles with me. And we had a very good art teacher at school. I remember, and he always encouraged and always said, "Use what you feel like, what the colours that you want to use. Always bring out those kinds of things." He's very motivated you know, motivated me to do those kinds of things and look at my heritage and the culture that I came from. We wanted to diversify. We thought, what else could we do to kind of bring students in and provide further opportunities? So, um, you know, we had a opportunity where we had a workshop uh, with the idea being that um, eventually we would have women, local women, coming in to get their hair done and their beauty done and have our own trainees on site so they were actually learning um, and then investing back into the salons. I know everyone, um, especially their families, would derive benefits from um, the opportunity for women to improve their skills and develop their social lives and helping other uh, their own integration and bring cohesion within their communities. This is your opportunity to gain new skills and be able to earn from your skills, enjoy your skills, especially in the community for you to use. So use it. This is what it's here for. To enable women to earn, this has always been whether you're sewing or whether you're hairdressing or helping people with their diet or exercise or well-being. The ethos behind Sula has always been to provide enough confidence, empower women so they can earn from their skills. Bristol's been wonderful. Um, Tottenham's always been home to us. All of us, there's uh, five of us, brothers and sisters, we got married and somebody went to live in Hartcliff. We were at Kingswood, my sister was in London, somebody was in Sharhattonton. But after we all got married and had children, we've all moved back to Tottenham. So it's real home to us. You know, people talk about achievement. Achievement comes and success comes in many ways. For me, is when I see that, you know, a woman that's sometime, you know, she's got a job to walk through the doors and then get enrolled and go into class and and what she kind of achieves is all part and parcel of being what we do and what Silai does best. You know, we've. And that's been the story of Salai. We've all come through, up through the roots. None of us have started from the top. We've all come up through the roots, and that includes me. I was, you know, a community worker three hours, six hours a week. And we have many stories that, uh, you know, link to that. We have young girls. I remember one of our staff. She, was, she came here uh, ten years ago. She was a punk rocker, I remember, and she kind of came here and did lots of courses and things, and is now a very successful, you know, tutor in her own right. She's passed all her exams, and the creche workers, the admin people, the tutors. So we've all kind of come up through the roots, which is, I guess that's what makes us so strong and determined to succeed, is because we care for what we do. And this building is not just a building, it's, you know, the history, it's what all of us have put in to making it a success.